Is it possible in, for you to believe that there is some sort of God that's not all-knowing, all-loving, all-powerful? Sort of a, a first cause sort of thing? That's a possibility. I mean, everything's on the table, and what we have to do is assign likelihood to that. You know, there are all these possibilities. It's possible that there are leprechauns. We can't rule that out. But I think when we make a judgment about whether a statement is true or not, any of these other gods don't seem to have as much evidence or any evidence either. And you might be referring to Thomas Jefferson and Thomas Paine, the pre-Darwinian deists who thought there was some kind of a force who started it all. That's possible. Uh, you know, we atheists don't have our heads in the sand going, nope, nope, there can't be any possible. But there's probably an infinite number of definitions of God. Are we going to spend our whole life examining every single one? I do know that the God of the Bible, if he's a good, loving, all-knowing personal being, that God does not exist. But that doesn't rule out, as you say, some other possible gods. But whoever makes the case for that God has the burden of proof. I don't have to disprove all those gods. If somebody's going to, if someone wants to present one to me, leprechauns, well, then they have the burden of proof. I, don't, I, I, I can't just say, I'm, I'm just not going to believe. You prove it to me, and I'll, I'll judge the evidence as I see. For many years, uh, for many centuries indeed, it seemed perfectly obvious that it couldn't possibly be a freak accident because you only had to look at living creatures, the sort of magnificent diversity we see in this, in this museum, and everything looks designed. And so it was clearly preposterous to suggest that it was due to any kind of freak accident. Darwin came along and showed that it's not actually a freak accident, but nor is it designed. There's, there's a third way, which in the case of biology is evolution by natural selection, which produces a close imitation of something that is designed. It's not designed, uh, we know that now, we understand how it, how it happened, um, but it looks very designed. Now the cosmos hasn't yet had its Darwin. We don't yet know how the laws of physics came into existence, how the physical constants came into existence. And so we can still say, is it a freak accident or was it designed? The analogy with biology might discourage us from being too confident that it's designed because we had our fingers burned before the 19th century in thinking that, that biology, which looks so much more obviously designed, uh, that we, we got our fingers burned there. Now, in the case of the cosmos, freak accident or design, the point that I've made over and over again is that even if we don't understand how it came about, it's not helpful to postulate a creator because the creator is the very kind of thing that needs an explanation. And although it's difficult enough to explain how a very simple origin of the universe came into being, how matter and energy, how one or two physical constants came into existence. Although it's difficult enough to think how simplicity came into existence, it's a hell of a lot harder to think how something as complicated as a god comes into existence, difficult enough to think of how a deist god comes into existence, and even more difficult to think of how a Christian god who actually cares about things like sin and gets himself born of a virgin. John mentioned in the answer to the previous question the idea of uh, the physical constants being finely tuned. And it's quite true that many scientists, uh, many physicists maintain that the physical constants, the, the half dozen or so numbers that, that physicists have to uh, simply assume in order to derive the rest of their understanding, just have to be assumed. You can't provide a rationale for why those numbers are there. And physicists have calculated that if any of these numbers was a little bit different, the universe as we know it wouldn't exist. We wouldn't be here. The universe would perhaps have fizzled out in the first yoctosecond, and so we wouldn't be here, or other things would have gone wrong. It's tempting, once again, to, Im to import the easy, facile idea of a designer and to say that the designer twiddled the knobs of the universe at the Big Bang and got them exactly right, got the gravitational constant right, got the strong force right, the weak force right, and so on. But it seems to me to be manifestly obvious that that is a futile kind of explanation, because as the quotation says, who designed the designer? You have explained precisely nothing, because instead of just saying, oh, well, the knobs were tuned to the right values anyway, you say, oh, there was a god who knew how to tune the knobs to the right values. And if you're going to postulate that, then you've, in a sense, 
sold the pass. Some physicists solved that problem by not, invo not invoking God, of course, but by invoking the anthropic principle, saying, well, here we are, we exist, we have to be in the kind of universe in which, uh, which is capable of giving rise to us. That in itself, I think, is unsatisfying, and as John Lennox rightly says, um, some physicists solve that by the uh, multiverse idea. The idea that, that the our universe is just one of many universes. There's a sort of foaming bubble, a, a bubbling foam of, of universes, and the one in which the bubble in which we are is only one of billions of universes. And each of these universes has different fundamental constants. Most of them have fundamental constants which are unsuited to give rise to the sort of permanence and the sort of chemistry, the sort of conditions that gives biological evolution, Darwinian evolution, the chance to get going. A tiny minority of those universes has what it takes to give rise to Darwinian evolution, ultimately chemistry and then, and then evolution. And that tiny minority has to include the universe in which we sit, because here we are. The anthropic principle, the principle that we have to be in a universe capable of giving rise to us, plus the principle of the multiverse, provides at least an interim satisfying explanation in a way that a creator couldn't possibly be a satisfying explanation for the reason that I've given. Then having got ourselves into a universe which is capable of generating stars, capable of generating chemistry, and ultimately capable of generating <coughs> the origin of life, then biological evolution takes over and now we are, we're on a clear run. Now we understand what happened. Once biological evolution gets going, then it's easy to understand most of what's difficult. Most of the, most of the difficulty of understanding the universe lies in lies in the, in the vast complexity of life. That's what really, truly impresses people. That's why people who believe in God mostly do believe in God, because they look around the living world and they see how impressive it is. So that level of Im impressedness is completely destroyed by Darwin. And Darwin, of course, doesn't explain the origin of the universe. Uh, for that, I invoke the anthropic principle and the multiverse, less satisfying, admittedly, but science makes progress. The one thing you can be absolutely sure is that a creative designer cannot be a satisfying explanation. Religious explanations which resort to God did it are intellectually lazy. I won't use a, a stronger term than that, but I do think that they are lazy because, I mean, what does it mean as an explanation. You lie there saying, oh, God did it. And everyone says, oh, I understand now. Religious explanations are easy to accept by the unthinking. Science is difficult to accept because it involves a lot of thought. You really have to tease out the processes by which an event occurs. You can't simply say, and God did it. You've got to go through in biology, you, you, you delve down into, if you like, the, the chemistry of the, of the organism. In chemistry, you delve down into the physics of the underlying processes. And I accept maybe in physics, you have to delve down into the underlying mathematical fabric of whatever I mean by that. Um, it's jolly hard work and you've got to work on it but it's more satisfying when you get to the end of an explanation than that extraordinarily lazy way of pretending to explain by saying, and abracadabra, God did it. I mean, that, that is intellectually corrupt.